Okay, here it is. Uh, this is a render with uh, the cool light that we just saw. Uh, so with the basic uh, settings I just saw you, this is the result you get. It's pretty clean, it's, you know, it's, it's minimal quality, you have a lot of grain in the image, but it gives you a really good idea how your material looks, how is your lighting, how is the overall setup of the image. So it's a good way and a fast way to do a quick render and figure out if you need to modify anything. If you need to modify anything, you go by to your application and you change the settings. Now uh, we're going to go to another type of uh, studio environment. It's here in the environment library. It's something that I use if I don't want to use HDRI or anything uh, really uh, fancy. I'm just going to skylight. I take it, put it onto the image, close. And if I'm coming back here in the setup, you see here by default, it goes to 23,000 lux to give you uh, the impression of the sunlight, daylight passing through uh, some glass. Um, I'm going to keep the reflections, the flattened ground, the ground plane. Everything is going to stay the same. Uh, the environment comes with uh, its own setting of 13.4. Uh, uh, this is like being outside, so it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't touch it. I never touch it. Frankly, it's it's enough for this kind of light. So skylight, daylight, 13.4 is is pretty good. I'm not going to use depth of field, and that's it for that. I can launch another render, and it's going to be another web render, eight 800 by 600, 75 percent pretty standard, should take 2 to 3 minutes, no more than that, coming here, 800 by 600, local renderer, final, 75%, and then I click render, I have already rendered that image, and that image is this one, so you see um, uh, the color temperature is much warmer, uh, the shadows are less defined, you have more light going all over the, all over the place, so that can be useful for some type of renders. I, I rarely use it. I either use uh, a full studio cool light render or uh, an HDRI that we're going to see later. So uh, this is how it looks once you render it. Let's go back to Fusion. Close this. Uh, the last one we're going to see right now is the, in the environment library standard from uh, Fusion 360. It's the dry lake bed, a lot of you know already. So for this one, I'm not going to use uh, the reflection because it doesn't make any sense. I'm coming here into the position and then I'm going to use, as you can see here, the ground scale. I told you before, the ground scale is used mostly for HDRIs because I can scale uh, my background, my HDRI ground, uh, based on the size of my part, if I make it look, look realistic, which is not the case now, but if you had a car, for example, you want to size it depending on the size of the image. And rotation allows you to rotate where the sun is coming from. The whole background, the whole decor is rotating. I'll try to show it to you. As you can see here, the whole background, the whole decor is rotating. So I'm going back to my original view. And uh, this is, uh, once I'm happy with it, I also launch another web render, 800 by 600. And this is how it looks when it's done. Pretty neat. Again, you can see a lot of grain here on that image, but it's just, you know, to check lighting, setup, composition of your image, materials. If everything is fine, then you can launch uh, a print high definition uh, render. quality 5 by 7 took uh, an hour and uh, 35 minutes to render as you can see uh, both light uh, material uh, quality you don't see any uh, blurred or any noise anymore so it's pretty neat